Hello, Cherie Hansen here. Um, I'm inviting you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which I'm going to be placing this particular video uh, loaded up to. And also, <clears throat> if you're interested, um, to follow my sort of circumcuitous path to just calming myself the heck down and mindfulness practice that I write about on my blog at sherihanson.com that has 75,000 subscribers. I'm reading to you today from The Art of Communicating by Thich Nhat Hanh. <coughs> and we're going through the six mantras of communicating with others. The second mantra. Don't use the second mantra until you've practiced the first and produced your presence. Then when you are truly there in the here and the now, you are in a position to recognize the presence of the other person. The second mantra is, I know you are there. I am very happy. You are letting your loved one know that his or her presence is important to your happiness. The second mantra acknowledges that you really see the other person. This is crucial because when a person ignores you, you don't feel that you are loved. You may feel that the people you love are too busy to see you. Your loved ones may be driving the car and thinking of everything except you who are sitting in the next seat. You don't have that person's attention. To love means to be aware of the presence of your beloved one and to recognize that presence as something which is very precious to you. You use the energy of mindfulness to recognize and embrace the presence of your beloved one. Embraced by your mindfulness, the other person will bloom like a flower. I know you are there, and I am very happy. The second mantra is to reaffirm the presence of the other person as someone very important to you. The second mantra, like the first, only works if you breathe in and out before saying it. Imagine the other person is not there. He or she has moved away or passed on. You might feel a big hole. Right now that person is alive and near you, so you're very lucky. That's why you have to practice the second mantra to remind yourself of the gift of that person's presence. When someone says he loves you, but he ignores your presence and doesn't pay attention to your being there, you don't have the feeling that you are loved. So when you love someone, you have to recognize his or her presence as something precious to you. The second mantra can be practiced every day, several times a day. I know you are there and it makes me very happy. This mantra, like the first, can be shared anytime, before work, at the dinner table, or over the phone, or by email, if you want to share it with someone you don't get a chance to see. These mantras will feel a bit awkward at first while you're getting used to them. But once you see the results, they will get easier. You can make yourself and the other person happy right away. It's quicker than instant coffee. But remember one thing, a mantra can be practiced successfully only if you know how to make yourself present and say it in mindfulness. The third mantra. Well, the first two mantras can be said several times a day, no matter what the situation. The third mantra is used when you notice the other person is suffering. The third mantra can help the other person suffer less right away. The third mantra is, 
I know you suffer. And that is why I am here for you. Thanks to your mindfulness, you know that something is not going well with your friend or loved one. When your loved one is suffering, your impulse may be to want to do something to fix it. But you don't need to do much. You just need to be there for him or her. That is true love. True love is made of mindfulness. Because of your mindfulness, you know when something is not going well with the loved one. When you notice that, you want to do something to help him or her suffer less. You don't have to do anything other than to be there. When you say the mantra right away, your loved one will suffer less. When you suffer and your loved ones ignore your suffering, you suffer much more. But if the other person is aware of your suffering and offers his presence to you during those difficult moments, you suffer less right away. It doesn't take much time to bring relief. So please use this mantra in your relationship to help the other person suffer less. And I think the thing that um, he keeps pointing to in his wisdom is how wisdom and energy and intention are doing something. When we go in and we, let's say somebody's in a chaotic house, we burst in the front door and we start cleaning it up, and I have a tendency to do that. <laughs> I'm gonna get very guilty. <laughs> what he is assuring us and me is that simply by being embodied, being home in your body, being calm, and working with the energy of love, you already lessen the other person's suffering. So here's a challenge. <laughs> Just get out in the world and try it out. It does work and it's amazing. It's everyday magic. How can I, by being in myself, by being calm in myself, make other people suffer less? Try it out. Thank you.